Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg, and as usual, I'm super stoked that you're here. Today's video is going to be about whether or not coding or scripting, however you want to preface it, is necessary to get into cybersecurity. And so that I don't drag you out to watch the entire video before you get your answer, I want to explain right up front what my personal opinion on this is. And my personal opinion is that coding is not necessary to get into cybersecurity, but it can be beneficial. It can be beneficial in automating things, in standing you out from the rest of applicants when you have a solid foundation on a certain language. It can help you to kind of progress things within an organization to do them more quickly. There are a ton of beneficial aspects of knowing coding, but in my experience, it's not necessary to get your foot in the door. I want to cover some of the specific languages that I do believe are really helpful to know within cybersecurity, specifically within certain fields or jobs within cybersecurity. So let's get into those right now. First off, let's start off by discussing Python. Probably one of the most popular languages going around right now. And the reason for that being is that Python is used throughout for automation. And if you know anything about being in IT, IT in general, not just limited to cybersecurity, is really enhanced when you can automate things. Now, specific to cybersecurity, one tool that I can think of off the top of my head is a SOAR platform. And SOAR, S-O-A-R, stands for Secure Security Orchestration and Automation Response. A lot of these SOAR platforms are having their playbooks and their runbooks created via the use of Python. What is a SOAR tool? You're probably asking, Meg, I've not heard of that. What does it do? The SOAR tools exist in cybersecurity to explicitly be able to automate things that are usually much more menial and manual tasks. So SOAR tools are taking the very repetitive tasks that get to be exhausting, time consuming, and have very little benefit, and they're turning it around and using the SOAR platform to automate them, whether it's retrieving certain data once a specific event has occurred, or whether it's taking an action on an email, or deleting an email, or resetting a user's password, SOAR tools function to automate things that generally would take a lot of manual effort and time. Python, like I mentioned, is used to help create the playbooks for a lot of these SOAR tools. Python isn't just limited in cybersecurity to SOAR tools. Obviously, it has a lot of uses, but this is kind of one of the main up and coming things that I can think about off the top of my head. Is it necessary to know Python for success in every field of cybersecurity? In my opinion, no. However, I do think because automation is so integral to IT in general, that Python is a great language to have a general foundation of. One of the things I kind of want to make a side note of while we're still in the beginning or middle rather of this video is that the need to know level for coding or scripting is highly contingent upon what size of organization that you are looking to work for and what kind of resources that organization has. And what I mean by that is these large enterprise organizations that have thousands of people dedicated to just their IT department. A lot of these companies have separation of duties enacted and separation of duties would basically mean I focus on my thing, you focus on your thing. And since we're both, both focusing on different things and we have different um, duties to accomplish, we're not going to cross over into each other, which ca could cause issues, cost more labor, use up resources, could allow us to carry out some malicious act because we're both doing the same thing and we're working together, anything like that. So in large organizations, often you're going to see coding people specifically working in DevSecOps, which is development security operations. Or you could see people who have the expert knowledge of coding working in application security. 
I don't know how often it is, at least in my experience, it's not often for your general engineers and analysts, which again, those positions differ from organization to organization. But in my experience, the vast majority of a security operations center would not necessarily be utilizing coding. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're a small organization, a mom and pop kind of shop or an SMB, and you have maybe one or two people total to do all of your IT or all of your cybersecurity, sure, absolutely, you can probably expect that you're going to need to know a lot more of coding because you're going to be responsible for a lot more. You may not have the funds and the resources and frankly, the human resources as well to have the separation of duties and you could be responsible for a lot more, which is where I can see having a strong foundation of coding being really integral and important to your success in your role. So we've spoken about Python. Why don't we speak a little bit about PowerShell ISE. And PowerShell ISE stands for Integrated Scripting Environment. PowerShell, as I'm probably sure, pretty sure that most of you know about this, it's obviously very common, is used to automate things within Windows. And this is not secular to cybersecurity. This is all throughout um, IT departments, everyone is using this from help desk to desktop support, whoever you are, if you're in IT, you were definitely at some point using PowerShell. So PowerShell, again, used to retrieve things, to automate things, to get data without having to do it manually or having to remote into many different systems. And PowerShell, there's a little bit of a caveat to it, because even though it's super important, at least in my experience, um, if you're a predominantly Windows organization, which I think most organizations are, as I was reading some Forbes article a couple weeks ago, um, PowerShell, it's so widely used that you can pretty much go on DuckDuckGo or Google or whatever your browser choice is and find the bones of a script that you can just customize or tailor to what exactly you need within your organization. Now let's hold up before everybody comes for me. I am not advocating just going online and finding some random script and running it within your environment without doing prior authorizations and investigations and analysis on what exactly the script is doing, who made it, what its purpose is, and what it will be accessing. Obviously, that's not safe or secure. What is the ideal situation is to find the bones of the script to tailor it to your company after you have done some analysis and investigation to ensure that it's only going to be executing and doing things that you expect the script to do within your environment. So PowerShell, yes, I would say it's integral to any role in IT, really. But I would say that because you can find so much of it online already, that it's already so widespread used, I would say that so long as you're really good at just doing some searches online and just doing like some custom nip tucks on the script, that you will be pretty set to go. The third description or third use of coding knowledge that I would want to talk about within cybersecurity is going to be PHP and JavaScript. And the reason I want to bring those up is because for any kind of interactiveness on an application or for PHP specifically for servers, these are obviously very common languages. However, I would not say that anyone within your security operations center really knows about this or really would need to know about this. I would say that PHP and JavaScript are need to knows for anyone going to be working in DevSecOps or as an application security architect slash engineer, anyone who's specifically responsible for overseeing the security of code and ensuring that your code is not susceptible or vulnerable to SQL injections, cross-site scripting, what have you. Outside of those limited roles that are directly working in application security or perhaps even penetration testing slash red teaming, I would not say that these are super common need to knows within cybersecurity. I wouldn't, at least in my experience, say that they're imperative to have a successful career in cybersecurity or even to get your foot into the door in cybersecurity. The last kind of general description that I want to touch on is 
SQL, and that's SQL. If you're not familiar with it, again, I want to approach these videos with kind of uh, an understanding that you guys may not have any idea what I'm speaking about. Uh, SQL stands, stands for Structured Query Language, and this is used to basically manipulate databases, update databases, what have you. I think SQL is very important. In most organizations, the companies are making use of SQL databases. Probably in every company, they're using a SQL database of some sort. But however, this is also, again, highly contingent upon what your role is in your company. I personally don't have any point of my job where I need to directly access SQL databases or manipulate data. The only time I can think about it for me personally where I would need that kind of understanding is if I were investigating an incident that involved a SQL database. And at that point, it would be good for me to have the knowledge, but I work in a large organization, so I would probably pull in people who have a higher skill set in SQL instead of trying to figure it out as I go on my own in the middle of an incident. Now, I can certainly imagine where engineers or architects, the people who are working more on infrastructure and backends, are going to need more SQL knowledge and understanding. That's completely reasonable. Again, this is just my opinion based off of my own experience. So that's kind of my overview and rundown on coding within cybersecurity. To summarize my opinion and my personal experience on it, I don't think having extensive coding knowledge is necessary to get your foot in the door in cybersecurity. I do think though that once you get your foot in the door that it's extremely beneficial to pick up on some tips and tricks, whether it's in PowerShell, Python, SQL, so that when those times approach, when you need to have an entry level or working level knowledge of those, that you do. And I think that you can make your job a lot easier by having knowledge of some of these languages and some of these um, scripts. If you have any questions, as always, I'm happy to reply in the comments or you can reach out to me through direct message and Instagram or Twitter. I'm always happy to do my best to get back to you guys or try to help out wherever I can. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'm not going to put out another video until next week, so I will see you then. Ciao.